Well, Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome along to the very first Landlord Lens of 2024. And um, as always, I am joined by NRLA CEO, Ben Beadle. And Ben, um, we've we've actually got breaking news to start off with, haven't we? And this email literally just landed in my inbox about five minutes before we started the webinar. So it really is hot off the press. And it's great that because we're live, we can actually talk about it. Yeah, happy new year, uh, folks. Um, yeah, it is uh, something that is hot off the press. Um, it concerns amendments to the uh, renters reform bill. It hasn't gone away, folks. Um, and it's worth me uh, pointing out that um, yeah, we've been working very hard uh, behind the scenes with a number of backbench MPs on what amendments should look like. And I'm very pleased to say that um, uh, Anthony Mangnall, uh, along with a number of colleagues, has tabled a series of uh, amendments ahead of the report stage, which we're expecting to be probably just before the end of the month. So perfect timing. Um, now, it's up to government to decide whether they accept these amendments, but it's great that we're getting um, some support for them to be tabled. And just to rattle through them very um uh, quickly, we see these as being you know, pragmatic uh, solutions to some of the rental reform uh, plans. And, um, you know, they are more practical uh, things that, that we've asked for. So making sure, for example, that evidence such as texts and emails from uh, neighbours can be taken into account by the courts when deciding whether a tenant has engaged in social behaviour. Um, making sure that selective licensing uh, uh, is abolished or at least reduced um, when the property portal uh, is brought in to protect the annual cycle of all student tenancies, not just uh, houses in multiple occupancy, um, and to make sure that um, uh, government address the concerns that the courts are not prepared for the impact of Section 21 repossessions by requiring the government to publish a review of the operational possession proceedings in the courts before it's uh, abolished. And that is really sort of seeking to hold government um, at, uh, you know, promises and commitments uh, and their feet to the fire on this. Um, so there are a few of the amendments that have gone in. I'm sure uh, there will be more, but the main one um, that uh, will, I think will pique people's interest is that uh, we've, or, or Anthony has tabled an amendment to say that there will be a moratorium, should be a moratorium period during the first uh, uh, six months of the tenancy. So uh, for renters, so i.e. it's mirrored. Uh, currently there is one for landlords where you can't give a no-fault notice and we're saying that's replicated for tenants so they won't be able to give notice within the first four months to expire after six months. So where we'll end up, I don't know, but a step in the right direction if they are adopted. Well, most definitely. And I think, you know, they have addressed some of the, the kind of key things that landlords were concerned about, about the renters reform bill. And I, I regard that as real, uh, you know, progress that you've uh, got this MP that's actually backing these um, proposed amendments and, and pushing it forward so it's very positive and that's really where we're going to start uh this landlord lens the very first one of 2024 because actually ben um i would say that this new year has has got off to a you know a very positive start for landlords a couple of things that that i've been noticing um obviously buy to let interest rates are on their way down we have a thread on property tribes updating every time um a, a lender reduces their buy to let rates and i seem to be going on it every day and adding new updates which is really exciting um, and we're hearing that you know prices are stabling buyers are coming back to the market first time buyers are in action so all in all, um, oh, and the other thing was landlord optimism seems to be, you yeah. know, rising. All in all, very positive um, start to 2024. Yeah, and our sentiment index, uh, Vanessa, is actually showing that as well, primarily linked to the cost of borrowing and associated, or until uh, yesterday, a uh, fall of uh, in inflation as well. So, you know, that is that, that is something to be optimistic about. I'm, you know, remortgaging at the moment. I, I hope uh, just in time the rates are going to be um, uh, 
uh, coming down. Of course, you know, there's still plenty uh, out there, um, you know, to uh, keep you awake at night. But I think that those are some big issues that uh, will be uh, welcome relief uh, to landlords. And of course, we're looking forward very much uh, ahead to the budget in, in March to see what impact there might be uh, on the Chancellor's statement on the on the housing mm -hmm. sector and, and other matters. But certainly, I think, yeah, we start the year uh, slightly better off than uh, than where we finished it. And I think, yeah, with inflation generally coming coming down yeah. and, you know, people, uh, mortgage firms, uh, banks reducing their rates should hopefully give us a bit of um, breathing space. Mm, indeed. Well, this is a live webinar and uh, we do invite you to interact with us. And Ben, there is a question for you um, from Suzanne Smith uh, on the uh, chat, which ple please, uh, everybody, feel free to use the Q&A uh, for this webinar. Uh, and it's just a quick question about some of the proposed amendments um, that you just mentioned earlier. Yeah, so she said here, any idea when the transition uh, arrangements for those tenancies in place come into effect? Um, so in terms of timing, we're probably not expecting sort of full implementation to take place until towards the end of the year, maybe the autumn, something like that. And what the government have said, Suzanne, is that there will be at least a 12 month um, lead-in period for existing tenancies and uh, I spoke with Jacob Young uh, last week and was pushing for a three-year uh, implementation period for two reasons. One, um, that it's uh, in terms of some of the changes in Scotland, ignoring, you know, the rest of the uh, storm that's going on up there with sort of rent control and that sort of jazz. But when they bought in the PRT, actually, it, they didn't have a cliff edge like in Wales. And so we think there's something on that element, at least something to learn from. And from across the border in, in Wales, um, obviously, you know, you don't need me to tell you it's been an absolute car crash there. Uh, because of the short time frames and that's seen possession cases rise by sort of 350 400 percent um and Jacob was very concerned about that when I put up, put it on his uh radar um and so it is why we are pushing for a much longer transition period so that you know if you do create a new tenancy uh, it's subject to the new provisions but existing tenancies have some way to um, uh, to to peter out and and by by doing things that way you have a bit more of a managed uh, transition and you don't create a cliff edge where landlords might feel under pressure to take certain steps um, that isn't in anybody's interest. No, that sounds eminently sensible to have a managed transition. Um, and maybe if they're saying 12 months and you're saying three years, maybe they'll compromise at two years or something like that. So well, great that you're in that. those, it's great yeah. that, you know, you're in those conversations. And, and you know, this is the point, isn't it, Vanessa? You know, this is this is all about compromise now. You know, this is about saying, um, yeah, and, and, you know, if I go back to, what inevitably comes up from time to time, why we're not opposing uh, Section 21 abolition. Actually, it's because we want to make sure we get the very, very best deal uh, for landlords and renters and the wider sector. And you can only do that by, you know, no point winging in the wind on some of these things because mm. they will happen, whether they happen now or whether they happen when Labour get in um, towards the end of the year, they will happen. Um, the best hope, I think, is that the government delivers something that feels like renters reform so that Labour can go and uh, deal with other things like hospital waiting lists and, and so forth. So mm -hmm. uh, and being in that room with, you know, politicians and others who can really influence things, I think is starting to bear to bear fruit. And, you know, that's what my members expect. And that's what we're going to do. Well, you sounded so definite there when you said Labour coming in at the end of the year. I did, a Freudian <laughs> slip maybe, I don't know, but uh, well, I, I think it's fair to say, um, I, I don't think I'd be breaching confidences to say that I think things need to change significantly to avoid that direction of travel. I'll go with that.
Now let's move on to our kind of landlord lens format. And if you're mm. new to us um, on the webinar, you're most welcome. Great to have you on board. Um, basically, this webinar is just me and Ben um, reviewing what's going on in the landlord space. And we use the uh, trending topics uh, silo on Property Tribes, which sorts everything um, a bit like Twitter when you see things trending on Twitter uh, to see what is really um, engaging landlords, getting them to come on the site and view things and add their comments and so on. And because it's the start of the year, I have just picked up a couple of kind of new year type topics to to get us going um and one of our main topics in the kind of first week after the new year was um people's buy to let hopes and strategies for 2024 because it is a new year people will have maybe hopefully had time to reflect um over the christmas break and we're coming back um and it, it it's really positive to start thinking about how you're going to play the buy to let game in 2024 because although you know we've said things are stabilizing um sam penn has just said about you know the suez canal uh issues uh affecting inflation um it, i think that's a strong possibility we're not out of the woods yet uh, are we ben um and i i'm going to continue to say you know being a portfolio land my, landlord myself um, my hopes are for stabilisation and I will continue to take a low risk approach to everything because I, I don't think the headwinds are going to fade away just yet. What's your no, view? I, I, I agree with that, Vanessa. You know, you know, I'm very vanilla when it comes to uh, <laughs> to these things. I like a, 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 an easy life uh, with uh, as guaranteed a return as, as, as possible. Um, and I, I suspect that most people are in the same boat. They're in this for for the longer term and won't be taking short term decisions um, very lightly. And we know that, you know, there there is likely uh, to be a change of government uh, this year that will that will have a whole range of knock on effects. Um, and so, you know, I'm sticking tight, keeping my cards close to, to my to my chest and seeing how things uh, play out, because I think, you know, it could well end up being sort of 2025 before we start to see uh, the colour of uh, uh, Labour's money. And, you know, there will be certain changes, I'm sure. And the thing is, when you do get a new government, um, that, that, no, I'm not saying they can do pretty much whatever they want in the first 100 days, but, you know, um, they can be pretty bullish. And, you know, we just have to see how these things play out, I think. Mm. Well, I guess m most of your members are vanilla buy to let landlords doing single occupancy buy to let that to me is the most low risk approach mm. um but i think still you know you've got to put extra layers of due diligence in when you are um you know researching a property you've got to really ramp up your tenant referencing um you know Although we have a wide pool of tenants uh, to choose from at the moment, that's not to, you know, that we should get complacent. Actually, just talking of positive things, um, Ben, I forgot to mention, I put one of my buy to, uh, one bed buy to let uh, apartments in London on um, uh, to rent about two weeks ago and uh, just after the new year. And um, I had 47 applicants by lunchtime. Wow. And I had 17 viewings and five offers at the full rent price. So I was, I was very happy about that. So my buy to let year got off to a very positive start. Indeed. My tenants moving in on the 20th, actually. So that's even better. But yeah, I think um, I, I think people should be wary of, of trying to scale up too quickly. I, I see a lot of people on property tribes thinking that you know that they're going to be able to recycle cash and you know scale up quickly i i think those days are, are, are pretty long gone to be honest and even if you could i still think it would be prudent to just you know lear learn as you go make sure each property is really set up well before you move on to another one and really understand what you're doing because i think the market's a, a lot less forgiving than probably when you and i started out all those years ago Totally. Um, not that many years ago. But, <laughs> um, but uh, no, you're right. Uh, and I think, you know, um, if you think you can wing it now, 
you'll be so sorely disappointed i think i think you know 20 years ago um you know a lot of people were sort of buying up uh buy to let properties and doing it on a wing and a prayer and 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 not necessarily following all of the the rules and regulations i just don't think that you can do that now uh, and certainly it doesn't make good business sense uh, uh to be a fly by night and so i think you know making sure you do your due diligence um uh invest your your money uh, wisely um, it always staggers me uh, or staggered me at the time because I was working in, in property management and people would be, you know, bringing uh, properties, uh, you know, for us to manage and find tenants and so forth. Just how little, um, you know, they, they'd they seen homes under the hammer or they'd seen, you know, some of these programs and thought it was a, a, a stroll in the park. And don't get me wrong, if you're prepared to pay an agent to do stuff for you, it can be made that that much easier. But, you know, I, I much prefer to be a hands-on in, investor, a hands-on uh, uh, landlord. And it takes time, it takes care, and it takes organisation. Um, uh, and all the more reason you should join our organisation and keep in touch with property tribes uh, to make sure that you don't miss a trick, whether you're using an agent or not. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Indeed. Because um, both Ben and I totally believe in landlords' being educated because we know that educated landlords make better landlords and that in turn gives tenants a better experience of private renting. Um, and, you know, tenants are our clients and we, we need to look after them and make sure that they're in safe and compliant homes. And both Property Tribes and the NRLA, Ben, we're, we're just all about, I think the key word is responsible landlords. A hundred percent. And, you know, that's what we're trying to demonstrate in our uh, political lobbying and campaigning you know this isn't um you know some of these amendments are are to make sure that responsible landlords have confidence not that um uh, you know uh, to encourage uh, a watering down of of regulations and 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 so forth but you know we're at a, a really difficult moment and i see in the in the q and a uh, vanessa you know people are sort of saying about the number of people that were applying for your mm -hmm. for your property you know that's not a normal market it's not a healthy market and mm -hmm. um you know whilst it's it's it could be good for us uh, as as landlords i'm always at pains to remind um uh politicians and renters groups that actually according to savills uh the profit that landlords took home despite high rents or comparatively high rents with the ons is actually sub four percent yield uh so you know there aren't that many winners uh when it comes to this sort of stuff when you bear in mind you know the cost of bringing properties uh to the market and it is why you know the renters reform bill um will only tinker around the edges it won't solve the substantive issues of a lack of supply um uh, either at a social or a private level uh, mm. it's as simple as that well jonathan says uh vanessa are you prepared to answer well, why wouldn't I be? Did you increase your rent uh, on your one bed property? Well, the truth was, Jonathan, um, I had it up for sale for about a year. I had two offers which I accepted. They both fell through. So in fact, it's been empty for a long time. Um, when I decided to uh, re-let it because it, I kind of felt it was getting stale on the market and I wanted to wait until next, you know, this summer, to, to uh, try and sell it again. Um, I uh, looked at the rents and they had gone up quite significantly since I'd last looked, um, but I put it actually a little bit below market value because I could only offer a relatively short tenancy because I am looking to sell at some point in about six months time. So I've made that aware to the prospective tenant and he's very happy with that. He actually only wants somewhere for six months. So it, it's worked out quite well, but I am happy uh, with the rent I got and it was about £75 uh, below, below the going rate. So I'm quite happy to be transparent on that point. <laughs> um, ben, let's move on to our second topic. Mm. Um, and you, you kind of touched on this. Um, you know, landlords on property tribes have been uh, talking about their biggest concerns for buy to let in 2024. Um, and I, I would say that a, a Labour government has got to be pretty, pretty high up on the agenda. <laughs> um, but there are other things that landlords are, are concerned about, aren't there? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, if I think about my own risk register, one of the things that we do do at NRLA is have a, a member's risk register. So what's on the mind of of, of what are our, our members most worried about and how can we help mitigate some of that risk? Um, and certainly, you know, um, a different administration with a different outlook being in power for uh, probably two parliaments, I would hazard a, a, a guess, will be, you know, will change the way that that landlords uh, feel about their their investments. But what I'm at sort of pains to stress with regards to that is that the same challenges lay in wait for a new administration as they do for an existing one that's been in power for 13, 14 years. So you know we we uh, there's comments in here about sort of you know maybe we should serve uh section 21s and 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 uh revoke them um if the the direction of travel is sensible i suspect that would play straight into um uh the socialist hands to be honest with you in terms of what they what they expect and you know what we will do we will be doing and what we're doing at the moment is working very closely with labor to make sure that despite you know how things are are projected that they appreciate you know what uh landlords are are going through and they will need a private rented sector even mm. if they commit to a significant uh, you know home building uh policy of council housing which which is something that has been muted that you know it would take time uh and they will need the homes to stay in the the mm. sector so it might be a bit more difficult for sure um, but they can't do away with the private rented sector. And of course, there's other things in there like, you know, mortgage rates and interest and tax and uh, regulation and all of those things that form a part of our members risk register. And it's, you know, part of the reason why we work so hard on a, a range of fronts to kind of, you know, uh, mitigate these things. The next thing will be, you know, energy efficiency, I'm sure. Mm. Well, I, I, I think, you know, landlords are under scrutiny at the moment yeah. and i think that we should lead by example um and I, i've always thought that anyway but you know recently uh we've had um you, you might be aware of it my nemesis um doing a chainsaw eviction as a publicity stunt and this kind of thing and unfortunately, I saw on social media some landlords coming out and saying, oh, yeah, you know, it, people shouldn't be allowed to rent properties without paying and all that kind of thing. But, you know, stunts like that are actually so damaging to our sector because, you know, the fact is that uh, a non-paying tenant is the risk that you take on as a buy-to-let landlord and the margin that you receive between the rent and, and your mortgage, if you have one, is your payment for taking on that risk. So landlords can't simply have it all our own way. Um, and, you know, I think that all landlords should be looking to um, act in a responsible manner and not bring our sector into disrepute at what is actually a very sensitive time for both our sector and landlords. Yeah, I agree with that, Vanessa. I think, um, you know, sometimes there's a, a certain part of our audience that doesn't help the cause, mm. if I put it in in, in that particular way. Um, and, you know, I understand, I mean, it was a publicity stunt, but from, from, from our perspective, you know, we have to make sure that if you hit a, a problem tenant, that the you know the process is on your side that the process is as easy as it can be um that there aren't unnecessary uh, delays and all of those types of things which is exactly what we're trying to do with the renters reform bill and so getting a commitment from michael gove uh, around making sure that he only pressed the abolish section 21 uh, button uh, when the courts were ready to receive such cases is helpful of course what we need to understand is well what constitutes it being ready and what does that look like um and there's a four-point test that we are talking to him about at the moment because um you know politics being politics it can be spun and interpreted in in, in different ways but i understand you know very much so that um if, if the risk is greater 
than the reward, that's problematic. And I think Mr. Gove appreciates that finally now, uh, arguably too little too late, but um, uh, bet better late than never. Well, I think you've hit the nail on the head there that that, that, that there does have to be that balance. Otherwise, um, becoming a landlord looks increasingly even more unattractive. And we're already uh, in short supply as it is for all the other things that we're always talking about, like Section 24 and rising interest rates and, but, and all those other things. That... And you're right. But the, but the thing is there, Vanessa, is that, um, you know, the only people that will suffer there are our are, are renters. And so we have to make that argument uh, loud and clear because, it, the best will in the world if a landlord isn't happy with the operating environment they can vote with their feet right um that you know you can cash your chips in whenever you want now i hope that 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 you won't or you at least do it on your terms and we're certainly part of what we're seeing at the moment is you know with sort of buy to lets having been around for sort of 20 25 years that sort of thing actually people are naturally coming to that sort of time frame where they might cash their chips in anyway and so it's always very difficult to pinpoint exactly why a property leaves the market or a landlord uh, uh, decides to leave the market it's all multi multifaceted what we know is that we've got 25 people on average applying for one property and until homes are built to a significant level that will only get worse simple Indeed. as that well on that uh, topic uh shushila patel has said uh her friend had a non-paying tenant uh, and ha had kind of decided to uh, get rid of the tenant, but she decided to talk to the tenant and managed to get uh, an agreement with right. with a payment plan. So that's a win win for the landlord and the tenant because the tenant gets to stay in their home and the landlord doesn't suffer a void. So uh, well done to your friend Shashila. Um, that that's in my opinion how I would handle a tenant in in rent arrears I would try and find out what was wrong because there can very often be legitimate reasons and curveballs are thrown to all of us in life and you know it's something could happen very legitimately like I don't know a death in the family or you know losing your job or any of those things that happen to all of us and it can throw some people off track and they just need a little bit of time um, to get you know, back on track. And I think a caring landlord, a responsible landlord, would do something like uh, Shishila's friend and kind of try and work out a payment plan or something like that to, to keep the tenants uh, in the property. So, so that's a good story to hear. 100%. Um, let's move on to our third topic. Um, now, this is part of... Um, my, you know, my consumer protection work that I do in our sector, which um, I hopefully am known for. Uh, I care very much about landlords and tenants, um, and I, I hate people uh, suffering financial loss or, uh, you know, unpleasant experiences. And um, it's been brought to my attention um, over many years, actually, but it kind of crystallized just a, a week or so ago that. Um, the portals where you can go direct to landlord like open rent and gumtree for example uh i think landlords on there and indeed tenants are at a uh, significant risk because there's um you know quite a few bad things that go on on those portals um and and one of them in my opinion is rent to renters and um, what these rent to renters do, very often they're just fresh off a property guru training course. They're told to avoid letting agents because a letting agent will do affordability checks, which they probably won't pass. So they're told to go direct to landlords via the likes of Open Rent and Gumtree um, and offer the landlord guaranteed rent and try and get the property off the landlord, maybe to sublet it, potentially turn it into an HMO, uh, maybe do serviced accommodation when it's a leasehold flat that prohibits that. So Ben, I have written a very long article on property tribes with actual empirical evidence from the property redress scheme uh, and Paul Champlina at Landlord Action who unravels a lot of these really mm. bad rent to rent arrangements. Um, and I just want to warn landlords, if something if somebody replies to your advert and says, I'm going to offer you guaranteed rent, they, they need to be very, very on their guard. Yeah, absolutely. What what the hell's the guarantee? 
who's behind the guarantee what is it um because if it is um you know uh, an unsolicited approach like this and i get them all the time it's so ir it's so tiresome because Will you get those colored envelopes oh, <laughs> don't, don't. I've, I've probably got some in the drawer here you know people... no, don't you mean in the bin yeah well well actually, the round yeah. bin <laughs> well because i've been i've been sending them um to um to go civil servants as an example of the hmo register uh, being used inappropriately um, for marketing purposes. Yeah, that's we've talked I've... about that before, haven't we, Ben? Yeah, um, and at the risk of getting a bee in my bonnet over it, you know, I, I get them every sodding week. And it's, you know, I, I'm I'm nervous about it because obviously we'll have the property portal. And if we've got, you know, there needs to be protections uh, on the property portal to stop these types of things from 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 happening i haven't given my uh consent and permission uh for some you know fly by night to contact me with some ridiculous promise of guaranteed rent um and frankly i'd need my head examining if i did go for it uh so seriously i would just bin them bin well, them i feel them. like i touched a nerve <laughs> yeah well it's it's really <laughs> irritating yeah i find it horribly irritating because there are some people that will look at that and think oh great guaranteed rent Seriously, folks, it's too good to be true. Forget about it. Yeah, because very often these people are fresh off a guru training course. They have no experience. They don't understand compliance. Worse, um, they've got no assets. You can't even sue them for any money. Well, exactly. If you look on Companies House, if they claim that they're a company, you'll find very likely and find, find that it was only incorporated in the last few months or certainly less than two years. They'll have no track record. Um, somebody with no assets guaranteeing your rent, that is absolutely worthless. And the problem with these rent to renters is that when things go wrong, they can very often just walk away because they've literally got no skin in the game. And then the landlord is left with a whole range of subtenants that they have no clue who they are, whether they've done proper right to rent checks, or any of these things. Um, and that's why these guaranteed rent arrangements offered by direct to landlord portals are, are so uh, risky to, to landlords and indeed tenants. Ben, I even came across one situation where a rent to renter was charging the tenants 150 pounds each just to be given a room in an HMO. And unfortunately, tenants may not be aware of the um, Tenant Fee Act and the bans and, you know, their, their consumer rights. And so these rent to renters are, are, are actually, you know, they're bad news for landlords and tenants. And um, I want to create awareness of that, Ben, because I think it's a growing issue. And I have written to both Gumtree and Open Rent and asked them to work with me on some kind of educational content or a notice on the site to be wary of being offered guaranteed rent 100 percent. and and vanessa suzanne uh, in fact we've got uh, two comments from two people with alliterative names like mine so suzanne smith uh, uh says it's well worth setting up an alert on um land registry in case you know you you get some fraudster trying to purport as being you and, and things like that, which is a really, really good uh, thing to do. I've, I've done exactly that. And we're working with um, Title Guardian. I'm going to be rolling that out uh, soon to NRLA members that does a, a similar thing. But Margaret Morrissey says, you know, landlords can't always rely on agents. And I would absolutely agree with that, mm -hmm. uh, Margaret, um, whether it's a, uh, a rent to rent agent or dare I say, it, you know, a traditional high street letting agent or property management agent. Trust nobody. Trust nobody with your asset. Um, and that's why I always say so I'm in a bad mood today, Vanessa. But, um, you know, even if I do use an agent, this is a significant asset of mine. Um, and bet your bottom dollar, I'm going to know uh, far more than that agent will. I will only use them in exceptional circumstances. And, and frankly, you know, landlords, by all means, you know, appoint an agent, but make sure you know more than them. Don't just mm -hmm. hand it over and abdicate your responsibility for, for the property because it will come back and bite you on the bum. It's as simple yes. as that. 100%. And I always look for an agent that has voluntarily committed to professional standards by being a member of 
a, a professional body like Arla or a safe agent. Um, I also check the reviews on all agent and trust pilot. And of course, you can go on to uh, the portals and ask uh, for recommendations, you know, come on to property tribes and ask for recommendation for a good landlord, sorry, good letting agent in Milton Keynes, for instance, if that's where you're looking. So there's lots of ways you can find your, your way to a good agent. But you're, you're right, Ben, you, you just can't choose any agent without any due diligence and think that they're going to kind of protect you from these kind of things. Um, in fact, Brian has said that uh, he had seven companies um, contacting him, offering silly money to take his flat off uh, mm. him for four years. Yes, that's another um, kind of uh, red flag. They're usually asking for a three to five year agreement. Um, but he contacted the NRLA help desk and was so grateful um, and because as he looked into five of the companies, um, they'd only just been set up and one had a very, very young director. So, um, Brian, I'm, I'm glad that you, you know, you did seek help with that. Um, and it's very good that you had that realisation, because I, I believe that, you know, the whole rent to rent space is totally unregulated. And I reckon that millions are lost yeah. Uh, in these um, unsustainable arrangements. So I'm now going to get off my hobby horse. <laughs> um, and uh, just, I think we've got time for one more question. Um, this is an interesting one, Ben, in, in kind of the context of the uh, post office uh, scandal. Uh, one landlord on Property Tribes is concerned that making tax digital could go down a similar road. And I can, in a way, understand that because landlords will be um, required to put in quarterly um, returns into some specialist um, HMRC software. And, you know, people may, may make mistakes or it may have bugs or, you know, I'm quite digitally minded, um, I think. And I'm not looking forward to MTD at all. <laughs> Um, just wondered what your view on that was, because I know that your app, um, your property management uh, software that you've uh, released fairly recently, I think that integrates into MTD, doesn't it? Uh, not yet. It does all of the um, uh, expenses and things like that, but it's it's on one of our enhancements and a very live conversation that we're we're having at the moment. Um, I'm more concerned about my tax return on the 31st of January, uh, Vanessa, because I've still not uh, submitted mine. I always leave mine to the day before. Um, I mean, that's terrible. Yeah, well, I, I, I just won't part with it any sooner and uh, part with the money any sooner. And if I get one more bloody text message from them saying you're almost there, then I shall absolutely scream. Um <laughs> But yeah, ma making tax digital, you know, it, it, I mean, I, I'm pleased to see it, it tweak slightly in terms of um, the threshold uh, increasing to £50,000. Um, but we do like to put our trust into uh, big, complicated uh, IT systems. Um, and I think the post office uh, programme um, and, you know, the, the real life element to the programme that that attracted everybody's attention is a warning sign um for everybody i suspect it won't change the direction uh of of travel but um it is certainly something to be uh very mindful of and it is one of the reasons why we want to um invest in a making tax digital platform so that we can hopefully uh control it and make it as much e much easier for uh for members and be satisfied uh, that the information is uh, correct and uh, and accurate. But that's something for later this year, folks. Yeah. Well, actually, if I think about our question number two, biggest concern for buy to let, uh, yeah, I think MTD would would go into that that category for me. I mean, I, I just always use an accountant. I've worked with him for, for many, many years. He understands my business. Um, he knows how to do my tax return uh, with the way that I submit my information to him. Um, and I, I'm not entirely clear whether we can still use an accountant uh, with the MTD uh, software. Um, do you have any steer on that, Ben? Oh, do you know what? I'm. I don't. I don't know actually. I mean, I would absolutely advocate using um, an, an accountant, but we're talking 2026, I think, for 
for MTD to be. Um, oh, is it that far ahead? Yeah. It's, okay. So I think there's a lot of um, a lot of water to pass under the um, under the under the bridge um, uh, b before that happens. So yeah, it's 2026 for those with uh, incomes over fifty thousand, and 2027 for those uh, of more than. Uh, 30,000 I think that's the other way around but there's a, there's a lead time but the earliest is 2026 so oh, good well now I know my time to get out of the sector <laughs> we'll worry about 20, that car 2026 <laughs> I'll be gone um oh well we've got to finish in four minutes because Ben's got another appointment but very quickly Ben um just to, just to round this up because I think this is kind of an evergreen topic um, landlords on property tribes are still talking about whether to go for a five or a two year fixed. Um, I do think this is interesting as we speak today with rent with rates coming down, uh, you know, new lenders every day reducing their rates, uh, some looking quite attractive now. Um, I I'm in the process of doing a remortgage and I, I sort of aired towards um, a two year fixed because I felt that, you know, uh, it was I think it was 4.34, which I do think is still a good rate in the market. But um, then, of course, I forgot that with a two year product, um, the stress testing is 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 much uh, tougher. And um, for this particular property with a two year fixed, I could only uh, really I could only get one hundred and eighty seven thousand. Uh, but uh, with a five year fixed, I could get 217,000. So I was actually looking to release some equity um, and I pretty much decided I am going to go for um, a five year fixed for that reason. But, um, you know, it, it's a bit of a, a tricky one at the moment to decide, isn't it? Because, you know, you, you're kind of thinking rates are coming down and then we've had inflation go up a tiny, tiny bit. And they're saying there's not going to be cuts anytime soon. And, you know, there's a lot of conflicting information and it makes it quite hard to decide which way to jump. 100 percent. I mean, it's like roulette at the moment, you know, it, which, which way do you go? I've got... Um, so I've just remortgaged two on a two year and I've got one more that's coming up at the end of February where it's a product transfer and I'm going on a two year because these are sort of big HMOs. So I'm not getting the four, you know, these are sort of, you know, silly money, sort of six, six and a half uh, uh, percent. Uh, so I'm doing it on a shorter period. But I am uh, getting some revised estimates now for the one at the end of February, given that rates are are, are coming down. That there's for me, there's not too many options. But I think the whole stress testing is quite an interesting um, uh, dynamic. Ordinarily, I would be fixing for for five years and having done with it. But given that you know the the availability of particular uh, HMO mortgages that I'm looking for, I'm going for a two year at the moment. Okay. Well, also, I just want to flag up to everybody, watch out for the fees. Some yes. of the lower rates have the most outrageous, ridiculous fees. I've seen one at 9% of the loan as a fee. Oh. So oh. do be wary of that because, you know, the lowest interest rate isn't always the best. And you do need to look at the entire product and its features before you make a decision don't just automatically go for the lowest rate because some of these fees are, are, are really very significant and if you think about it uh, certainly in two years if your property hasn't risen that much in, in value and you've put nine ten fifteen seventeen thousand on your mortgage in fees um you know it, it could it could compromise your your uh, equity position so so do be careful um we've just had some interesting comments about mtd leslie hall says she's checked you can use an accountant yeah, yeah, yeah. um then uh, another anonymous attendee has said uh there's likely to be a dispensation for older people like uh people over 80 who aren't it savvy um well that's good to know i'm not quite yet there yet but um it's good to know that that could be the case. And Susie Keane has asked her accountant about tax digital, making tax, tax digital. Uh, they can do it, but of course they'll charge for it, but I'm okay with that. Indeed. Um, Vanessa, can I just answer two quick questions, if, if I may? Um, um, we've got a question about non-qualified leaseholders. 
Um, and I've just posted a, um, a link in the chat that um, talks a little bit about the work that we're doing there. It's not as high profile for us as rental uh, reform, but it is something that the team are working uh, on and are engaged with. And I've just posted a link so you can see what we're doing there. Um, and then the last one was just from Stephen Banks, uh, who's, who's asking why we've accepted a compromise position in relation to PRS students when uh, the purpose-built sector can kind of do as they as they please. Um, Stephen, the straightforward answer um, is because it, it was either accept a compromise or, or or accept kind of, you know, what government are wanting to do. And at the moment, um, whilst we have a ground, what we don't have uh, is anything to prevent uh, renters from giving notice on day one. And so the moratorium that um, uh, amendment that's been tabled will at least go some way to giving a fixed term of at least uh, six months, uh, which frankly is better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Th these are all about compromises, I'm afraid. Um, the purpose-built student accommodation is very heavily uh, regulated um, uh, and it, I didn't want to suggest that our sector be any more regulated than it already is in a way that purpose uh, built is. There were a couple of other options, but we think this is the most straightforward uh, option. And there's no guarantee we will even um, even get that. Gove is very clear. He doesn't want exceptions of different cohorts to the bill. The one that we've managed to carve out thus far is the student one, but that's probably about as far as it's going to go. And I know that's a disappointing answer, but I say that as a student landlord uh, in the main myself, it is something we're going to have to uh, adapt to. Vanessa? Yeah, no, I understand, Ben. And I, I think you have a, a very challenging position uh, in terms of, uh, you know, getting government to listen, because, it, it, you know, it is clear that that they're set on a certain course and as you say you you in you you are going to have to compromise because that that's a, as much as you really can influence the situation and i think you've got a, a a difficult job ben because you've got to meet the demands of the members but then you're actually working um you know direct with government committees and mp's and things who have a pretty entrenched position um, and, you know, I, I admire you for, for what you do. Um, and I think you've got to be in the room, Vanessa. Exactly. You've got to be in the room. Be in the room. If you're not, you're totally irrelevant. Indeed. We can't be the chainsawing uh, guy uh, bashing down the door because otherwise we'd never get in the room. And I know that that's sometimes a frustration for landlords. You know, why do we not say this or why do we say mm. things in a particular way? Folks, it's because we want the best deal for you. That's what we want. And there's yeah. a way to getting it. And this is this is my way. Well, I 100 percent support that, Ben. And uh, it's great to have you uh, in, in the corridors of power um, doing what you do. And you, you build rapport with the, the politicians and the ministers as well, which is very, very important. And you get into those conversations that are so important to have. And you do feedback what members say. So I know that you're doing your absolute utmost um, to, to fight the landlord corner. 100%. And it's not necessarily just about the landlord, it's for the good of the sector. And I take the view, mm. uh, Vanessa, that what's good for the landlord is in the most part good for for renters you've only got to use section 24 as an example of that you know punish landlords you punish renters rents are at an all-time uh high and uh in no small part because of the punitive taxation uh barriers to entering the market and the lack of supply uh that's been forced on uh, on investors that want to do a good job uh so let's be careful what we wish for <laughs> OK, well, on that note, um, it just remains me to, for me to thank everybody who's posted a question um, this afternoon and indeed joined us on the very first webinar of uh, 2024 for the Landlord Lens collaboration. Um, sorry, we didn't get to all your questions, but this video, uh, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on the NRLA social media and also on Property Tribe. So if there are things that you want to, uh, you know, keep the conversation going on, then you have that opportunity to go onto the social web and the various platforms and just continue the conversation. And I think it's so healthy, Ben, because it really does 
tease out the issues and uh, you know it's an old saying but so true the devil is always in the detail in property and you know very wide headlines um you know they, they they're no good you have yeah. to really really drill down onto the detail and it allows me to be really candid with people in a way that um frankly I, I can't always do through a, a press release so um i i love these types of events i love all of the uh questions that we're that we're getting in the engagement and uh no doubt we'll be doing it again in a in a couple of months time vanessa we will but for now um just thank you so much for joining us and ben and i would like to wish everybody a very happy new year and we will see you somewhere down the property trail uh, maybe at some events i'll be at the property investor show in april are you going to that ben yeah. see you there yeah. so we'll see you there or maybe on another landlord lens in a couple of months time but for now very good afternoon to everybody enjoy the rest of your day thanks all bye-bye